Today is January the 21st, 2016. Um, what I'm going to make a video about today, I hope will make sense. What I was doing earlier today is I was cruising the internet looking at some uh, threads, some blogs about transformers and vacuum tube amplifiers and whatever. And uh, what, I, what I run across a lot, and it's all good. I mean, there's some nonsense out there, and there's some good stuff out there, of course. Is uh, they were talking about the load impedance and the reflected impedance, the load impedance on the secondary, the reflected impedance back to the primary. The primary being where the plates of the push pull tubes are connected, of course. And uh, <clears throat> there was a gentleman that made some measurements, like the things that I do. And in a nutshell, his measurements didn't turn out to be exactly 5,000 or 4,000 or 2,500, whatever. But I recognized his variations, and I know I get the same thing. And there is a difference between a stated value, say 8,000 ohms, and a measured value. Because for one thing, you've got to realize that the tolerance of the transformer is probably 10 or 20 percent. If it's 20 percent, then 20 percent of 8,000 is 1,600 ohms. So 8,000 could be 9,600, or it could be whatever, 8 minus 16 would be 7, 6,400. It can be anywhere in between there. This is reality. So. What it boils down to is his numbers came out such that he was ridiculed and chastised and somebody was saying, well, you know, you've got your um, impedance ratios changing and that's based on the turns ratio and you can't have your turns ratio changing in your transformer, that's obvious. I mean, the transformer is fixed, the turns ratio is fixed, but it's a lot more complex than that. So what I'm going to do is make some real life measurements. We have a transformer that's stamped exactly what it's supposed to be, then I trust it. I have some components we'll use to verify that our, um, our uh, impedance bridge is right on, and it is. And I'll show you that you don't get the numbers quite the way you think you do. <clears throat> First of all, meaning that if you say you have an 8,000 ohm primary, to an 8 ohm load and you change that 8 ohm load to a 16 ohm load and you're going to have a 16,000 ohm primary reflected back. If, if you change the secondary load to 4 ohms then you're going to have a 4,000 ohm uh, primary impedance. Well that is the way we do it and that is the engineering way to do it and I'm not trying to change that but in reality which may not even be important here but I think it's kind of important to, uh, when you see where people have made actual measurements, you, you just don't get what the book says. We'll start with this right here to verify our, uh, our meter. Here's a 10,000 ohm resistor, and I'm going to put it in, in series with a precision 86 millihenry choke. And what we should get out of that is R plus Z equals R plus JX. We should get 10,000 ohms for the resistor. And for the uh, choke, we should get 2 pi FL, 2, enter, pi times F, 1,000 hertz, times L, that was uh, 86 E3, change sign, times 540 ohms. So we should get ZX equals 10,000 plus J, 540. Okay, now the way we do that, is uh, I'm injecting a, a thousand hertz into this uh, parallel circuit right here and when I make the measurements here on the uh, with the null here I'm using this old GR uh, meter for a null it works really good now that I've got it fixed now that I've got new tubes in it and stuff if any of you seen my older uh, video on this uh, amplifier null detector okay when I I've got it balanced and when I turn this right here Watch the needle there. I think you can see it. So you can see it dips right there. And uh, 
we're actually measuring in minutes now. The way that this impedance bridge works is it cannot measure uh, a resistance over 10, 000, or 1050 ohms, R plus JX mode, 1050. So you can measure from 0 to 1000 ohms as Z of X, and then as Y of X it picks up at 1000 and goes to infinity. So you can measure everything between a dead short and an open. It works. So what we have here is when we tweak this thing into place, and you read this off, you get exactly a hundred. There's no here. I'm not going to move the camera, but as close as you can possibly read that is about five. Now, what I've done over here is I've written a little routine to make the math a little simpler. Let me zoom, zoom in on this and hope you can see this well. This is a, an Excel spreadsheet that I wrote a routine in, and I put in these admittance values right here. So if I put in 100, which I did, and five, I can just type them in. I can go up here with my mouse and click on this and type in 100. Go down to the next cell and type in. It's actually minus 5. You, you have to read it carefully. It's, a, uh, it's uh, BX is a minus 5. And then when you go down, what you end up getting is 9,000. It's R plus JX. It's 9975 plus a... Uh, an X value of 498. Now I know that's not perfect. It's reading it as um, 9,975 for 10,000 ohms. That's, that's pretty darn close, right? And and it's reading the 540 as 498. That's about as close as I can read uh, the resolution of the, the thing. But that's that's ballpark. That's actually quite good. 498 to a ratio of 540. Let's see what that is. Uh, 498.75. Call it 499. Yeah, 499 divide. That's within 8%. 1.08. So we got a pretty good answer. And the scalar value, which is just the Z portion of it, is says that uh, it's 10,000 ohms. 9,987 ohms. So we know that our instrument is pretty accurate. It's working. It's well within tolerance. We know it should be 10,000 plus J4, uh, excuse me, 540, whatever it came out to be. I've already said it enough times. So it's okay. So our meter works. The reason I'm doing this is because I've heard some people malign the, the meter a little bit, but maybe they just didn't take the time to null it properly. Okay. With that said, now let's zoom back out and deal with a transformer and I'll show you what we get. This is a little tedious but bear with me if you can. Now what I have here is that uh, James transformer which I consider quite a nice little transformer. It's an 8000 ohm primary, 8000 ohm center tap primary to um, 4816 ohm. Okay, I've got 8 ohms across, the 8 ohms, these are 1% resistors right here, they're precision resistors. I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to uh, set it up, just so you don't have to watch me fumble so much, I'll come back and show you the readings, we'll punch them in again, and, and we'll get the impedance, and then I'll change it, and I, hopefully I can do all this, uh, you know, in one recording, and and, and you'll, you'll see what we get, and I think you might be surprised. Okay, we got the transformer hooked up. I've got it very well balanced. We've got it, we're doing it in the, this form right, right here, in admittance. The admittance is in the form of G plus JBX. Well, the value of G here is in micro modes, and it's 110, so I've typed 120, so I've typed that in. This one is minus 10. I don't know if you want to see me put the camera on that so you can read them, but that's what it is. And it gives us a format of YX would be 8,275, that would be this value, plus 689. And then if you do the, the math to convert this to a scalar Z impedance, it's 8,304 ohms. So it's 8,300 ohms. It's supposed to be an 8,000 ohm transformer. So we're off by 300 ohms. Is that the fault of the transformer? Is that the fault of me? I don't know.
Ultima equipment, but it's pretty darn close, isn't it? Now let's put a 4 ohm load across it. All I got to do is connect one more 8 ohm resistor parallel with it, and I got a 4 ohm load. And I'm going to try to do this one real time. See the meter pegged? Watch this meter right here when I when I put the other 4 ohm across it. See there it is. I hope you can see that. When I do this. Bang, peg. So now I've got to uh, get down here and null this again. Well, I've got to turn the gain down so I can see where it is. Somewhere on there. There we go. See, you see it dipping down to zero. When I turn the gain up, so that I've always got a really nice, strong display about in the middle. There we go. That one's dipping nicely. This one is dipping right there. This is dipping right there. That's about as close as I can get it. If I really take the time to use this, I get just as accurate a results as I do when I use the spectrum analyzer. Now I'm going to have to get my fat head in the way again, but if I look down at this, that looks like 210 and about oh, 15. 210 and 15. I'm going to punch that in. 210 and 15. And let's, let's see so you can see real time what it comes out to be. says it's uh, in the form again in this format right here and admit it's form y equals g plus jbx gx is 4737 uh, the the b portion is 338.4 and z comes out to be 4749 okay that's okay 4700 but what I'm what the point I'm making here is when you make real-life measurements you don't get exactly 8,000 and when you half it you don't get exactly 4,000 life just isn't that clean that's probably enough of a demonstration you can uh, we can go and do this over and over and over and you'll end up getting a whole bunch of results and you'll end up seeing wow well it's not exactly the way uh, the academic version shows us that it should be, but it's okay, and they're real. Does that make it better or worse? No. It is, should you be using this necessarily instead of the simpler method? No. Not trying to change that. There's no need in changing it. We've been using the simple method all of our engineering lives, and we should keep it up. But it's just, I don't know, I guess I felt compelled to... Uh, to uh, uh, confirm that the gentleman that was making these measurements is, his measurements were probably right. I am going to show you one other thing that's really going to surprise you, but I got to kind of regroup here. You're going to you're going to really say, "Whoa, this is crazy." But I'll give you a hint. Do you think if you put an 8 ohm load between 0 and 8 on your transformer, that's 8 ohms, right? Between 0 and 8. That's what I've been doing, and I get these numbers that are that are correct. They're, they're within uh, the uh, tolerance of what we would expect. Okay, what about if you put your 8 ohm load between 8 and 16? That's 8 ohms, right? No. Not even close. I'll have to show you the math for that. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's not bad. But it's not even close to right. I'll have to get resituated here. Okay. Now what I've done is I've moved the 8 ohm load from the 0 from the zero to 8 to the 8 to 16. Now here's the crazy thing. You're going to love this. The unknown impedance works like this. Z3 is the unknown. It is the square root of the higher impedance minus the square root of the lower impedance that squared. If you do this math, so it's the square root of 16 minus the square root of 8 squared. 4 minus 2.828 squared. So it's 1.7116 squared, which the impedance actually of that piece between 8 ohms and 16 ohms is actually only 1.3726 ohms. I know we don't have to carry that to that many decimal points. Okay, so now since we have a 1. 
four ohm impedance hooking in between the eight and the sixteen ohm now we've got this multiplying ratio of eight ohms is what we're putting on there now we're doing it back to the analytical math method we divide that by the 1.3726 so we're going to have a multiplying factor of 5.83 5.83 times our original impedance of 8,000 ohms is going to be 46,627 46,000 crazy huh okay well I've balanced this thing again tediously and I've put those numbers in and look at what we get Remember, we're expecting about 46,000 ohms or so. The values that I read out of here are about, oh, about 18 and 8, I believe. So I've, I've put those numbers in, these cells right here, 18 and minus 8, and we get 50,767. 50,800 thereabouts. Well, our calculation said 46,000. We're measuring. We're actually measuring 50,000. This is theoretical and this is real. Now, if that's not confusing enough, I don't know what is. But that's the way it works. Look it up, try it out, amuse yourself with the math and the details. I find it fascinating. So, if you think you can get the same thing hooking your 8 ohm load between 0 and 8 as you can hooking in between 8 and 16, uh, this is the way it works. So it, transformers can be extremely complex. Now we don't want to do this. We don't want to live with this all the time. We want to keep it simple. We want our life to be uh, when we double or half the load impedance on the secondary. We want our primary impedance to double or half. We want life simple. And for all practical purposes it is, and that's the way we do it, and that's the way we should remain doing it. But if you make measurements, you're going to find out that life isn't quite that simple. So I hope you enjoy this uh, this nuttiness. I sure enjoy playing with it. Keeps the cobwebs out of my brain.